This body may soon consider the Nuclear Weapon Free Iran Act. And that's a bill to do exactly the opposite, to impose additional sanctions against Iran, do it now, and hold it in abeyance. Before casting a vote, senators should ask themselves, what would happen if the bill passes and a promised veto by the president is not sustained? I'd like to give you my view. I sincerely believe that the P5 plus one negotiations with Iran would end, and with it, the best opportunity in more than 30 years to make a major change in Iranian behavior, a change that could not only open all kinds of economic opportunities for the Iranian people, but help change the course of a nation. Its destiny, in fact, could be changed. Passing additional sanctions now would only play into the hands of those in Iran who are most eager to see diplomacy fail. Iranian conservatives, hardliners, will attack President Rouhani and Foreign Minister Zarif for seeking a nuclear compromise. They argue that Iran exchanged a freeze of its nuclear program for additional and harsh punitive sanctions. Think about that. You didn't achieve anything with this agreement. All you got were more sanctions. They're held in abeyance, but the body has already passed them. Secondly, if the United States cannot honor an interim agreement negotiated in Geneva by Russia, China, France, Germany, the UK, and ourselves, we're not alone in this. It will never lift sanctions after a final agreement. Above all, they will argue the United States is not interested in nuclear diplomacy. We are interested in regime change. The bottom line, if this body passes S-1881, diplomatic negotiations will collapse and there will be no final agreement. Some might want that result, but I do not. Iran's nuclear program would once again be unrestrained, and the only remaining option to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon would be a military action. I do not want that unless it's absolutely necessary. To date, the prospect of just considering this bill has prompted Iranian legislators to, continue to consider retaliation. There's talk that the legislative branch, called the Majlis, may move to increase nuclear enrichment far beyond the 5% limit in the interim agreement and much closer to, if not achieving, weapons-grade uranium. So the authors of additional sanctions in this body and Iranian hardliners in the other body would actually combine to blow up the diplomatic effort of six major powers. The bill's sponsors have argued that sanctions would strengthen the United Nations' hand in negotiations. They argue that sanctions brought Iran to the negotiating table in the first place. They contend that additional sanctions would force Iran to abandon its nuclear program. I could not disagree more. Let me give you the views of a few other people who are knowledgeable in the arena. Dr. Paul Pilar, the former senior U.S. intelligence official and current professor at Georgetown University, recently wrote, and I quote, it's the prospect of having U.S.-led sanctions removed that will convince Iran to accept severe restrictions on its nuclear program. Threatening Iran with additional sanctions now, after it has agreed to the interim agreement, and the interim agreement is about to go into effect, will not convince Tehran to complete a final agreement. I couldn't agree more. If this bill would help our negotiators, as his authors contend, they would say so. 
This bill is an egregious imposition on the executive's authority to conduct foreign affairs. In fact, our Secretary of State has formally asked this Congress to give our negotiators and our experts the time and space to do their jobs, including no new sanctions. And what does this body say sitting here? We're not going to do that? This is a Secretary of State that's of this body, Chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, who has been absolutely prodigious in his efforts to get this interim agreement, has gotten it, and we're going to run the risk that it's going to break apart the next six months when a final agreement might well be no negotiated. So, if the Senate imposes its will, if we override the president's veto and it blows up this very fragile process, some would say, too bad, what a tragedy. And we know what the Iranian reaction will be. The Iranian foreign minister, Zarif, who I happen to have known for a substantial period of time, has clearly stated what the result will be, summer, what the result will be in five words, and it's this. The entire deal is dead. That's his direct quote. Why wouldn't we take him at his word? So far, he's been good for his word. The ambassador of our staunchest ally, the UK, warned this body not to pass more sanctions. Sir Peter Westmacott recently wrote, and I quote, further sanctions now would only hurt negotiations and risk eroding international support for the sanctions that have brought us this far. The time for additional measures will come if Iran reneges on the deal or negotiations fail. Now is not that time." End quote. So I deeply believe that a vote for this legislation will cause negotiations to collapse. The United States, not Iran, then becomes the party that risks fracturing the international coalition that has enabled our sanctions to succeed in the first place. And it says to the UK, China, Russia, France, and Germany that our country cannot be trusted to stand behind our diplomatic commitments. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a very big statement. These allies will question whether their compliance with sanctions and the economic sacrifices they have made are for naught. Should these negotiations fall apart, the choices are few, and the most likely result, in my view, is the eventual and inevitable use of, middle for of military force. And so I ask this body, is that the choice we want to make in six days, the tentative agreement will go into place. We want to pass this. We don't even want to wait and see what happens. We don't want to wait to see what the IAEA finds when they're in there 24-7, 365 days a year. I think what we ought to do is concentrate on Iranian compliance with the interim agreement. On January 20th, 2014, the inter this agreement comes into effect six days from now.